What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today I bought a 1973 Ford Mustang off of ACV Auctions. What's interesting about this car is that it recently sold five months ago at Gateway Motors for $27,000 and I just purchased it for $13,000 and change. Now, I'm a little skeptical at how this happened. I don't really understand how somebody drove it for five months and a few thousand miles and then sold it and lost like $15,000, but it's supposed to be a run and drive. I saw a video of it running and unfortunately I got a phone call today from the shipping company saying, this car doesn't run, it's not a dead battery, there's something mechanically damaged. So the shipping company did a good deal here and they, uh, they left it right by the street for us. So we're gonna try to get into it, see if we can get it started, figure out what's wrong, and hopefully I didn't get screwed. So I'm not gonna lie, it's in a very sketchy spot. This is not good, and apparently it's been sitting here all day. It is maybe two and a half, three feet off the side of the road here, and this is a very busy road. Um, I guess we could start by just kind of walking around. It looked way better than this. <laughs> in the pictures. I don't know if the pictures were old or what the deal was, but yeah, it definitely looked a little bit better in the pictures than it looks here. This particular 73, unfortunately, is not a fastback. Fastback has that nice uh, top that slopes all the way down to the back. This one's more, I don't know what they call it, but it's not a very desirable car to begin with. And it's got only one set of exhaust pipes coming out the back here. There's not another one over there. Overall, I mean, really, the car looks pretty good. I believe this is the gas tank. Yeah. Hopefully it's got some fuel. The paint looks good. The body looks good. The tires look good. The wheels look good. I mean, overall, she's not a bad-looking car. Um, but I'm very concerned that the, the, the shipping company said it doesn't run. I told him he could use my jump box and he said that he tried jumping it and it still doesn't run. He said, jumping it is not the problem. He said, there is something else wrong with this car. So I called up ACV and I said, hey, could you guys, you know, check with the seller and find out, you know, if there's some trick to starting this, maybe it has a kill switch or something. And well, I never heard back from him. Now, I'm not here blasting ACV. I don't want you guys to think that I'm over here talking trash on him. Uh, <laughs> they know me. The school bus just drove by. Everybody knows me. Um, I'm not blasting him or anything. Everybody's busy. You know, I'm sure at some point they'll get back to me. Um, so I looked up the VIN number of this car. I just Googled it online. And what came back was only one listing for this from, uh, I think it was Gateway Classic Motor Cars. And it had sold for $27,000, I think, in June of this year. Obviously, it's November, and I just picked it up for $13,500, $13,600, something like that. Now, in Gateway's posts, these seats that are now upside down in the back seat were installed, and it looks like somebody took them out. There should be another one in the trunk. According to the listing, the other seat was in the trunk. And I guess they just swapped them out for these. Why? I, I don't know. Um... Boy, that door closes nicely. Really nice. Honestly, the car looks, it looks good. It's dirty, but it looks good. So I guess let's open this door. Is there, I don't even know where the hood popper is. Is it here or, oh boy, there's wires under here. Oh, there's a computer. What is this, an alarm? Oh, great. There's an alarm under here with wires and oh man this was not in the pictures either <laughs> what is all this that that was not in the pictures it has like a viper looking alarm system it is a viper yep there it is um okay maybe oh i can't even sit in this car Good Lord. What the hell? Oh, the starter. The starter's not engaging. <laughs> well, 
That sure isn't good. Boy, oh boy, this is great. Well, let's open the hood. The good news is it sounds like it's just a problem with the starter. Wow, that hood is crazy long. Good Lord. And it just wobbles around on those hinges. Wow. Okay. I'd say you gotta be very careful uh, closing this hood. Uh, this has the 351 Windsor. And it's got some grease on it, so it definitely doesn't look like it's got it's a brand new motor or anything. Some silicon down there. Huh. Where's the starter? Because obviously I'm going to need to do the old hammer trick. We're going to have to try to tap on the starter with a hammer. Hopefully it's... I see it right there. It looks like a brand new starter, too. Well, this should be fun, guys. Maybe if I tap on the starter with a hammer, we can get it to uh, come back to life. The main thing is getting it away from this road. Because this is super sketchy and super dangerous. Well, this is tons of fun, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, I brought out my hammer and I thought, you know, probably just tap on it. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, um, I think the bolts, both of them are completely stripped out that hold the starter in. Uh, the starter is kind of hanging out of the engine uh, and the bottom bolt is not even in it anymore. I'll see if I can even get you guys under here. Let me see if I can squeeze you in here at an angle where you can see what's going on but there's the starter right there and uh well there's the bolt i can't really see the top bolt too well maybe you can but uh yeah so uh if i reach in here and pull out the bolt it's not even in. I mean, uh, here it is. It's it's stripped. It's got tons of, I don't know how well you can see that. Hold on, let me try it right here. Look at that. That uh, That's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. All right, well, we're going to try this again. Um, I cleaned up the bolt on the bottom, and I tried to reinstall it. Sure enough, uh, something in there is stripped out, and I think it's... The, uh, the threads that go into the bell housing are stripped. Um, that starter is not, it's not in there. It does not tighten down. Uh, unfortunately, these seats don't appear to move. Uh, you can recline them, but that seems to be about it. I can't figure out a way to get these things to actually move forward and backward at all. It's like they're, they're stuck, just kind of maybe welded. I'm gonna get you guys down there, see if you can see anything i mean there's the bolts but i don't see anything um i see a way to recline it right there and then as far as like hell these aren't even all the way in look at this oh wow <laughs> okay uh boy oh boy and i don't fit very well in this at all I was hoping maybe this had a tilt column. There it is. There it is. Yeah, this steering wheel sits so low and I can't get in. <laughs> what the? Is this not a tilt wheel? I literally don't fit in this car at all. All right, I think it's safe to take it on a test drive. It doesn't look like anything's leaking out from under it. And I gotta say before we go any further, man, thank you all so much for the, uh, the views on these two cars. The 1988 Cavalier Z24, man, that one's on fire. And this one too, my $2,500 uh, 1989 Fox Body Mustang LX 5.0. Um, the views did so good on the both of these cars that I was so excited at how excited you guys were about these old cars that I bought another one on top of the 91 uh, Firebird Formula that is on the way. I actually went and bought the last generation Fox Body I bought my favorite version, and I've never owned one, a 1993 Mustang GT convertible. And I think I got it for a song and a dance, guys. One thing I did not know about these cars, I looked them up on Haggerty, and I started looking up the valuation tools. 
And these cars, and I looked them up on Facebook Marketplace too, Fox bodies are selling for insane money. I had no idea, but these things are actually worth a pretty penny. I'm seeing ones that are almost completely junk being listed for six to $8,000 and decent ones, average condition ones, are going for 12, 13,000 and really nice ones, 20 to $30,000. Absolutely insane. No such luck for Cavaliers. <laughs> They'll unfortunately probably never be worth that kind of money. And this car probably won't either. I haven't looked up the, uh, the book value on this. I, I just, I don't think I want to know. Um, I'm finding it exceptionally difficult to believe that somebody paid $27,000 for this car. I'll be completely honest with you. If it can make it on the 10 mile run, and as of this moment, I'm not even sure that it's going to, uh, to restart. Um, I am thankful that it does have the, it does have the alarm. That's nice. Um, does it have a trunk popper? No. Remote start, maybe? Hold on. No, I bet it doesn't have remote. You never know, it might have remote start. Hold on. Let's close the door. Let's lock it. And then, you hold it? No? Twice? No remote start? Yeah, I guess remote start is not an option on this car. Okay, well, whatever. I was hoping that it was. What the? Oh, great. Let's hope I didn't just totally disable the car somehow. Now I've got to figure out how to get in this thing. I'm telling you, sitting in this car, is a, it, 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 it's not fun. It is not fun. I don't know if the, the issue is with the steering wheel, if it comes out too far, if the seats, I mean, these seats don't even adjust. You can move, a, you can move the, uh, the backs up and down, and that's it. The seat bottoms don't actually move at all. So to get in this thing, you're kind of like, let me take my, I even got to take my phone out of my pocket because it's like squeezing into this thing, man. It's a good night. I'm not kidding. This car is a chore to get into. I mean, once you're in, it's all right. We're gonna, we're gonna have to swap the seats out, hopefully for those other red ones. I took those out. Let's see if it'll start. <laughs> I figured as much. <laughs> that's, that's great. The starter came off again. Well, <laughs> I cut out quite a bit of uh, what could have been in video just because I'm just trying to get this done. You know what I mean? The sun's going down, it's getting late. I've been out all day filming, doing my, my Copart videos today. So, <laughs> I was so excited to come down here and uh, get to share this car with you guys. But uh, I'll be honest with you, after this MacGyver stuff I just had to do, I'm a little disappointed. With that said, I'm trying to keep in mind that I did not pay $27,000 for this car. So imagine this. Imagine if I had paid twenty-seven dollars for this car. Uh, I'd be pissed. I mean, no joke. I'd be, I, I'd be livid. I'd be furious that I paid $30,000 for this car. Um... I mean, overall, it's not bad. You know, the, the interior is good enough. It's it's decent. I haven't tried the radio yet. I don't even care at this point if the radio works or not. Hopefully, the lights work and hopefully the signals work. It's got an alarm. It's got a 351 that you know, it seems to run good enough. We'll get it out on the road. We're going to do our 10 miles with it. We'll see. We'll see how she does. Oh, well, it gets scratch. I mean, it's. The steering seems decent. The tires are like new, so I mean you can't complain too much. You know, I don't I don't want to come off like a negative Nancy on my own car here. It seems to ride alright. It's just uh, you know, mainly it's the seats, so I'm being completely honest. The seats are what's just killing me in this thing. The speedometer seems to work, we're doing 45 and it cruises. The horn horn seems to work. Okay, I'll be honest with you, it actually drives really well. Now that we're out on the road and we're, you know, we're able to get it up to speed, actually, it, it rides great. And the body looks good. I mean, it's definitely not a, uh, a concourse type of a deal. But it's not bad for what it is. Not at all. Let's see if we can get her up to about 60. See how she handles. I'll tell you this. 
I hoped it would be a little bit better. The starter has definitely been a pain in my backside. I'm gonna have to, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to tap that, that lower starter bolt. The upper bolt is fine. The lower bolt needs to be re-tapped, tapped and died. Once you do that, I think it'll be fine as far as being able to get it started. And I'm really surprised that it rides this good. It, it, it actually rides wonderful, guys. We're doing, unfortunately, I'm not able to get it up to 60 because we got this guy in front of us doing 50. <laughs> I'd love to be able to get it up to the speed limit, which is 65. But it rides like a dream. You put some decent seats in the front of this, and if the radio works, man, it's a cruiser is what it is. It's not fast, definitely not a muscle car. I wouldn't even classify it as a sports car. I, I guess it is, but it's, it's not particularly fast. But man, she gets down the road just fine, very comfortable, and I guarantee you this car will get looks everywhere it goes. So we're finally up to 60 miles an hour. The guy in front of me finally decided to move on out of the way and uh, let us get some speed going. We're cruising 60, it holds the road just fine. It is honestly, even with these crappy seats, it's a pretty comfortable car. Uh, but step number one, before the starter even, I can I can deal with the starter. I know how to make it start again, right? But step number one, I need to get these seats out of here and get the get the other seats in and hope that they are better than this because these these seats absolutely suck. Once you're in it and you're going, I mean it's all right, but no, these seats suck. And again, the car seems to be running just fine, driving down the road, holding its own just fine. And I know the 73, you know, the, the later 70s, I think, what what was the last good year? Like 71, maybe, maybe 69, I don't know. Um, that's debatable for sure. But one thing that isn't really debatable is that 73 was not it for most people. Most people did not like this body style. Um, now, with that said, keep in mind that the 73 is what was used in Gone in 60 Seconds. Actually, I think it was a 71 that was made to look like a 73, and it was yellow. The original Gone in 60 Seconds. This was it, man. This was the car. So it has a little bit of cool factor going to it just because of that movie. Other than that, though, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know that. They, I don't know that there's much to brag about on this car. It's big, it's bulky, it's slow, but it's comfortable. So with that said, take a look at the speedometer. We're doing almost 65. Hopefully you can see it down there. Yeah, we're cruising at a pretty decent rate of speed. And she seems to really be enjoying it. The car seems like it's eager to just put some miles down, man. So, uh, yeah. Okay, I was a little upset at first, but I'll be, I'm not upset anymore. I did not pay $27,000 for this car. I paid 13 grand, maybe 14, I don't know. It's like 13, five, 13, seven, whatever it was. 13, 14 thousand dollars what I paid for this car. It's a good looking car, man. It's not that bad. Now, I'll tell you who I feel bad for though is whoever shelled out $27,000 for this car. I'd be heated. I would be, I would be seriously heated if I had paid 30 grand for this thing. But $13,000, $14,000, I'd be willing to bet with just a tad bit of work, not a whole lot of money, just a little bit of work, I'll bet we could easily get our money back out of this car if we decided to sell it. But you know what, $13,000, is it something that I really want to sell? Well, truthfully, not right now. Turn signals seem like they're working. I can hear them clicking. Take it off road here. I'm curious, does it have a, <laughs> you know what I gotta ask. Does it have a posi? I don't know. We're going to uh, let me let me tap the accelerator real quick, and then we'll get behind it and we'll see. Okay, I think it I think it does, guys. Honestly, I think it I think it does have a posi, and I love these seat belts. Let me show you these seat belts real quick. These are actually very very beautiful. Take a look at these. Nice lap belts right there. My fiance is calling me. We're gonna put it in park. We're gonna hop out, which I try to do when nobody's looking because it is really, oh my God, I can't get out. It, it's a chore. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, take a look at that. We got dual tires ripping through the gravel there, guys. That's what you wanna see right there. That's what you wanna see. 
Good, good, good. I'm loving the car more and more. It needs, it, it, it doesn't need headers, but it at least needs a real dual exhaust coming out the back. What do you guys think, man? You know, let's turn the headlights on. Let's make sure they work. We'll just take a quick walk around it. Now that I'm happy, I'm not mad anymore. I, I was kind of heated, I ain't gonna lie. Guys, I was, I was heated. <laughs> When I first, I was like, oh my God, man. Uh, I felt like I really gotten taken for a ride there. But, you know, again, I gotta put things into perspective. Sometimes when you're angry, it, <laughs> it helps to do that. You know, think about things for a minute. Think about, I could have paid $27,000 for this car and yeah, I'd have been seriously heated. As it is, though, 13 grand, not too bad. Not too bad, man. So we started out kind of negative and I wanna apologize for that. I try real hard not to be negative on my videos as much as I can, I try to keep things positive. I just, I felt like I got taken for a ride, man. And whoever rigged up that lower bolt, they knew about it. You know what I mean? They, they knew about it. Uh, sometimes dealers can be shady. You know, it's just, it's just the way it is. Looks like we got tail lights, we got headlights, we got corner lights, parking lights, everything seems to work. Let's try out the turn signals real quick. I think it's a slick car, man. I know it's not for everybody. There's a lot of people going to hate on it because, you know, 73, ugh. Well, I, I don't know, man. I think, I think it looks all right. I do. I think you send it down to Brian at the auto spa. Let him maybe work a little bit of magic on it. Yeah, we got turn signals. I'll bet he can make this red and this black really pop, guys. I'm serious. Right turn signal. Yeah. Look at that. Sounds like it's got a little, you know, it kind of maybe misfires just a tad bit here and there. Not too bad though, not too bad. And it's smooth as silk going down the road, guys. Like no joke. The engine, it's not powerful. It's not fast, but it doesn't have to be, man. It's just, it's a cool car from the 70s. I like it, I do, I'm happy now. I really am, I'm legitimately happy now. This, the only thing I'm not happy about is I gotta figure out how to climb back in this damn car again, man. That is. That is really something. Take a look at the back seats. Now that I took that seat out of it, um, and I took the seat out of the trunk, you know, I like the color scheme, and it goes great with those doors, you know? Ugh. And I'm getting better at getting in and out. There's a trick to it, and once you learn it, you know, you, you got it. I can't find the brights. I was looking for the little stomper switch for the brights. I can't find that. I'm not gonna put the seat belt on. I don't think we need to. And I, I think this is a, a three-speed automatic, not a, not an overdrive. There we go. <laughs> ripper. She's a ripper. <laughs> Only on the gravel. Don't let her fool you. Only on the gravel. All right. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, let them ponies roam, man. That's what I'm talking about. Good girl. <laughs> She's happy. She, she wants some fresh feel. We're going 70? No way. I need to slow it down. Well, I'm actually speeding right now. In a 1973 Mustang. I'm speeding. That's, that's almost funny. Oh, man. All right, guys. You know I gotta try that radio out here a little bit. I'm hopeful that it works, but to get you down here and show you the speedometer, like, no joke, man. Look, we'll get her back up to 70. She gets it, too. Wow, it actually does get it, guys. I feel bad for making fun of her now. I'm re I'm sorry, car. I was angry. I said, I said horrible things when I was mad. You guys didn't hear it because I wasn't filming, but I, oh, that guy just went off the road. Wow. Like, he full on went off the road. Well, you know what this means? It means we got another project on the channel. You know, hopefully I could buy a, a, a tap and die kit. We can uh, clean out those threads, put a new set in there, and uh, we shouldn't have any more problems out of that starter once we do that. We'll get the seats changed out and it'll, it'll probably make the whole car. I'm serious, I, 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 I'm in love with this thing now. I am, I started out hating it and now I just absolutely love it. All right guys, I'm gonna continue on the rest of my way and hopefully, fingers crossed, we make it back to the house. So I guess my only question is now that we are back, we made it, is it gonna restart or is the starter gonna grind again? You gotta be real careful with that guys. You can't be grinding the starter because 
doing that is probably tearing up your flywheel and then you're going to be removing a transmission so i think it's going to start right up not a problem good golly man i can't believe i was so i was so upset <laughs> petty little things man it's not the end of the world randy calm down let's take the key out i don't actually know if this alarm does anything to be honest i mean it beeps which is great i'm sure if you open the door or something it might set off the alarm but i'm not sure it actually does anything to prevent the car from being stolen oh i wanted to check the radio you know that's the other thing it's got this really cool old radio and you push this button and then it turns digital come on I'll be listen to that <laughs> it's got a radio it's got speakers it's got a speaker up here and it's got speakers in the back too I'm not sure what this does if anything oh that's that's fade you've got a menu button right there for the time party none I don't know not too bad guys not too bad well i was just about to end the video and i thought you know what i'm gonna do something different in this video usually i don't do this but i'm kind of excited to drive the car home and you know what's crazy i still haven't driven this cavalier i took it on that 10 mile drive in the video i meant to take it home and enjoy it put it in the garage drive it and i haven't it just it's sat here this one i'm still waiting on all of my parts from uh American Muscle to come in, primarily the springs. <laughs> I can't drive it like this, guys. Um, but why don't we fire this one up real quick and just see how it uh, how it sounds. And by the way, if you go to this website now, king-of-the-streets.org, that now takes you to my very first YouTube video on this car, which I thought was really cool. Uh, one of my subscribers did that for me. Oh, another one I got to get seats for. I totally forgot about that. The seats in this one absolutely suck. We've got a lot to do to this one. Ah, oh, it fires right up. Does it stay running? Yeah, man, it this thing runs great. Oh, it sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> no smoke? I mean, there shouldn't be. The engine's brand new. Listen to that. God, it sounds good. <laughs> this is a great car. I can't wait for the new Fox body to get here, too, so I can put them side by side. An LX and a GT. I've had the hardest time for so long finding one Fox body that was reasonably, reasonably priced, and almost one after the other, I found two of them. Two of them, $2,500 for this one. I'm not gonna tell you how much I paid for the other one, but it was it was cheap. It was really cheap, especially for a legitimate 93 GT convertible. Um, not everybody wants a convertible, but I'm here to tell you, the convertibles, the convertible GTs, Vanilla Ice made those things hot. That's what happened. Vanilla Ice made them hot, and those cars will probably always be hot because of him. Rolling in my 5.0 with the top down so my hair can blow. All right, I'm not Vanilla Ice. All right, I'm simply, yeah. Anyway, here's the Grand National. It's still sitting here. Um, got a sponsorship with Kerbin Performance. I'm still waiting on parts for this one too, man. I tell you, it's the parts that are holding me up on everything. It's, and I'm sure no fault from the from the retailers or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it just it just takes time to get parts, and it's frustrating because I got all these cars that I want to get to work on, and I'm stuck <laughs> waiting on parts. Story of my life. It just fires up and runs great. We're going to uh, we're going to take this car, put it into the shop real quick where the uh, Grand National was. We're going to swap out those seats. I want the uh, I want the red seats back in it because they are adjustable, and I'm really tempted to drive this thing home. So here's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to wash up the tires and wheels just real fast because they're filthy, and then we're, we'll pull it into the garage. We'll swap out those front seats. I'll see if I can do anything else with that starter, which I doubt I can right now. 
and then uh, then I'm gonna call it a night, but I want you guys to see it with those red seats in it. Well, it's been three hours. I didn't even realize it's been that long, guys. It is 8.08, yeah, eight o'clock at night. Uh, <laughs> I just kind of got wrapped up, man. I, I actually did a lot and I did it off camera. I don't tend to work on these things in the first video. We just kind of run them, see how good they're, how bad they are in some cases, and uh, then we call it a day and then we come back. Unfortunately, I want to drive this home. So there you go. I did it. I changed out the seats. It was kind of a bear. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the seats were kind of a pain. So the interesting thing is these seats, and they, these seats are so much more comfortable, so much more comfortable. They go further back, you can go forward, you can get yourself really nice and comfortable in these. But the only problem is, um, and they lock, they latch, but the only problem is there's no back and forth adjustment to the, uh, to the backrest of the seat, none, none at all. So what you got is what you got. So the other seats, they had an adjustable backrest, but you couldn't get them to slide forward or backward. They were just stuck in place. These seats slide forward and backwards, but you can't adjust, <laughs> you can't adjust the back. So um, we can slide this up here, take a look. You can see the back seats now. I think it just lo it looks better this way. This is the way it was supposed to be, guys. This is the way it was at the uh, at the Gateway Motor Classics or Gateway Classic Cars, whatever it is. This is how it was there, and and I feel like this is the way it's supposed to be. Now everything matches. The car looks really, really good. Um, I tried to adjust my steering wheel. It's a non it's a non tilt column, but I dropped the column. I dropped the dash, uh, dropped all the stuff under the dash, dropped the column down, and I finagled with it to try to get it just up some and unfortunately i wasted a lot of time trying to get that steering wheel up so why don't i grab the keys real quick let's make sure it's going to fire back up because i think i'm going to drive this home and enjoy it for a couple of days then i'll bring it back and swap it out for something else well i don't know if you guys can tell but i cleaned it up a little bit i like that <laughs> i i like the car i, I really do um it really needs a good buff and polish but the hood had all of this stuff I don't know, dried white crap all over it. Same thing with the windshield. So I used alcohol in a rag and I got it all off. Um, so it, it will clean up. This is something that really needs to go down to the auto spa and have a good paint correction, a real good interior detail. And I think this thing would come out looking real sharp. You can see how much easier I can get in this car now. If you look down though, the steering wheel is still just, you know, I've got the seat all the way back. Um, but I mean, the steering wheel is just, it's, it's not, I, I don't like it. I don't know if it's this steering wheel, um, or if there's some way of, of raising this column up, but yeah. Anyway, listen to that. Fired right up. Oh, and let's turn on the lights. Check out those lights. Blue. And... Look, I got brights now. How about that? Yeah. The pony lights up. Pony goes off. And I got my stereo adjusted. Hopefully it turns on. Yeah. I've got it. Uh, well, I guess I've got it pretty well situated the way I want. Hopefully the brake lights work. That's about the only thing that I haven't checked. And it's also, it's also out of gas. Yeah, I didn't think about that. There's no gas in this. So I can get in and out of it much easier now. And that's really the, that's really the main thing. Look, I barely closed that door. Look at it, closed perfectly. Listen to her run. Even the tag light works, man. I'm gonna need to take this, go get some, uh, go get some fuel. And that's going to be a wrap for this video. I got to go get the Grand National and uh, I got to bring it back into the garage where it belongs. I got a fire extinguisher down there as well, just in case. Uh, all the necessary precautions, man. What do you guys think? I don't, I don't know. Like, I tend to lose money on these things anytime I buy something. Anytime I buy something old like this, I end up losing everything. You know, it's, it's just, I don't do well with these. I just love them and I can't help that. I really love these vehicles. The wheels cleaned up nicely. Take a look at those. I mean, those really came out looking pretty sharp. 
got great tires. It seems to run pretty well. Uh, full tank of gas probably wouldn't hurt it. Um, but 13 grand, 13, 14, whatever. You tell me if you think I did good on it. I am gonna get out of here because now, what time is it now? It's 8.30. I gotta go. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the video of my 1973 Ford Mustang. If you did, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. It started off negative. I was mad and angry and just frustrated and it ended with me being very happy. I do have a jack and some tools in the trunk. And there's a spare tire back there. I've got some tools also for that starter in case I need to tighten it back down on the side of the road with a jack and a jack stand. So uh, we should be good to go, guys. I'm gonna try to drive it home and hopefully if all goes well, I'll get to enjoy it for a couple of days before I bring it down here and swap it out for something else. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.